really excited to invite Anne up and see if she is the one that in fact did the KitchenAid mixer. <laughs> Hello, Anne. How are you today? Hi, I'm doing great. I am indeed the one who did the um, uh, the KitchenAid mixer. I love doing Stitch Composer and yeah. uh, creating stitches for our machine. So it's really a little love of mine. So that yeah. is awesome. Yeah. Well, I love how that worked out. But this is your first time being here, so if you don't mind, if you want to just tell everybody who you are. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm Ann Hine. I'm actually Janome's embroidery software specialist. So besides doing all the other things educators do, like demo machines and all, all those things, I work with their artistic digitizer software and the other software we have, like Stitch Composer and AccuStitch and the apps and all of that. That's sort of my uh, little thing that I do. And I have videos I post on uh, Thursdays. I do an, a busy video on the Janome sewing machines page for our artistic digitizer. And I um, sort of like the mistress of the page for Janome Artistic Digitizer, our Facebook group page, where we have all our questions answered on artistic digitizer. And um, I try to inspire people with things. And most of the time they post things that just inspire me. So I love that page. So if you can check it out, you will see me over there on the Janome Artistic Digitizer page. Or you can find Miriam and I doing videos on the uh, Janome Sewing Machines page or the Continental Club page. So we're pretty busy video wise, but <laughs> really fun. That's awesome. We will definitely be checking those out. So we appreciate you joining us today. We're gonna to be talking about a little bit more compact machine, which is gonna be that Memory Craft 9850, but I'm excited to see all the features that it has. So if you have any questions, just let me know. I'll be in the background or I might pop on with some questions from our viewers if you're okay with that. Oh, that sounds perfect. That'd be great because I can't actually see the questions where I'm standing. So if you just feed them to me, I'll be happy to answer them. All right. Sounds like a plan. Then I'll let you take it away. All right. So this is our 9850. It is a compact machine. I love to call this machine a big machine in a small package. It has top of the line features, but it's in a small package. It's very compact. You can carry it away on a retreat. You can take it on a trip. Um, you can move it in your sewing room very easily. And Janome has included a lot of my favorite things under the flip lid. We can find all those stitches up here. And you'll all chuckle at this. You can actually import a stitch that you make in Stitch Composer in this machine as well. So I've already played with that part of it. But when you look at the front of the machine, I'm going to touch here to get our screen to come on board. We have a, a nice space under here, about 10 inches and almost five inches tall this way. Um, if you're looking at the very front, we have all our buttons right here. We have our start stop button, our reverse, the lock stitch, which is handy when you need a little uh, extra lock at the beginning or end of a seam. We have our needle up, needle down, and everyone's favorite button right here, the scissor button. So when you're done sewing, you just touch there and clip your thread top and bob it and you can take your fabric out and restart again. This is our speed slider right here. And this works in conjunction with your foot control or just your stop, start stop button. So if you're maybe a lead foot and you're a little speed demon, you can put it here in the middle and your uh, foot control will only go that medium speed. But if you feel the need for speed, you can always move it way over here and you'll have full speed ahead. We're gonna get to the uh, screen over here in just a moment. I want to show you a few things on this side of the machine. Um, we have onboard storage here, so I'm going to pop this open. And I've already preloaded it with some of the accessories. Janome packs our machines with lots of things. Um, on this one, we do have our, this is our um, zipper foot, a button sewing on foot. We have um, our um, quarter inch foot, our over edge foot. We have a decorative stitch foot. Uh, rolled hem, and then this is our blind hem foot. And then inside here, I'm gonna set this over here. Inside, we have some more accessories. Of course, we have a darning foot, but who darns because most of the time we're doing free motion quilting. So we have that one. And then there's a quilting bar. So if you're doing uh, lines of stitching, you would put your quilting bar on. And then down in here, of course, some thread caps. We have our 
buttonhole foot. And this is great because we have the pull down buttonhole. Um, when you open this up, you would, it pulls down in there so you can get, um, you put your button in the back side, and then you'll get the same size button hole for all the buttons that you're doing for your garment, or maybe you're doing them on a bag or something like that. So it just pulls up to the back, you put your button in here, and it'll make uh, memorized buttons for you. I love this, this feature. I do a lot of craft sewing um, and clothing sewing, so it's handy to have that. There's an extra um, spool holder in here as well. It just tucks right away. So let me just stick this back in here. I'm going to close it up. So this part is an extension table. It does come off. Excuse my reach. So we can pull it off to the side. I've loaded a few more accessories under here. Our scissors and our embroidery bobbin case. And of course, a little brush, a seam ripper, and our cleaner is in there as well. I do have two pieces up on top, um, and I'm going to show those later. It's our, our screwdriver and our embroidery foot. But now that I have it off, you can see we have a nice free arm here. So if you're doing bags or sleeves or pant legs, you can slide them right up here and um, sew them on, on here with the free arm. Now, one thing this, you know, I mentioned this is a compact machine. This is a great machine to take to a retreat and to travel with, but it's also a great second machine. If you have a really large machine, um, you could be uh, embroidering on your other machine and you could do some sewing over here. If you have a flatbed machine, you have your free arm over here as well. So it's a great combination of, you know, you can work with in your sewing room. I've had this in my sewing room for probably the last two months and I almost don't want to give it up now because it's, it's like my little fun thing to have over there. I have the great big one, but I do love this little one. It does have your pop-off stitch plate here. There's no screws there. You just push down here on this lever and your plate will pop off. Now, do you know me? See how it doesn't want to come all the way up? Janome gives this machine, I'm going to reach around, the extra high lift so I can get thicker things under there and I can easily put my plate on and off just by holding it up in the back. To put it back on, I just push it down and it's back on. So you can easily change plates. There's optional plate for this. The, the straight stitch plate is an optional plate. So you have that as well. I'm going to put our uh, extension table back on because it gives you lots of space under here uh, when you're sewing. Now I did mention when we're down here, let's go down here and look a little bit. This is for your, when you, this is your threader and then behind that back in here is the buttonhole one. So you do have a nice threader on here as well because it's very hard, you know, some of us wear glasses and it's much nicer to have your uh, needle threader for that part of it. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the screen. I'm going to step aside here and have my cameraman get the screen uh, right in here so you can see. Now, you might have seen me uh, remove a message. When you open up your uh, stitch plate or maybe you lock your machine, you will get some messages on here. So Junomi makes that for safety, and I, I like that. It's just a quick reminder. So when you're looking at our screen on the very right-hand side, we have our home button, and that will bring you back to your home position which is right here. Most of our machines, I have to say, not most, let me say all of our machines, start out right on your utility page with straight stitch. So anytime you turn your machine on, you will find you're in right here on your straight stitch, right here with your straight stitches, and then you can move into your decoratives as we go along. Below that is the little tab to move you from sewing to embroidery. This is a combination machine, so I will show you the embroidery side also. Down here is your file. If you wanted to uh, take something out of a USB port, you will use your, your folder. And I'll show you that too. I have a USB in today. This part right here, this is the set mode. I'm just gonna open this up just a little bit. It's in here that you can set things for how you like to sew. And this is one of my favorite things with Janome. I can get this machine set the way I like to sew with the features that I like. And there's common ones between the sewing and embroidery. There's things that are just for sewing, like how much bobbin thread I like to have left. And there's things for the embroidery side as well. And you can have a different amount of embroidery thread left on your uh, embroidery side. The great thing too, this machine comes with a feature called resume. So if you turn your machine off and then you come back to it and turn it on, if you had a stitch that you were using here, maybe you're using um, one of the decorative stitches and you uh, made a change to it, 
when you turn your machine back on, it'll ask you if you want to resume that stitch. The same thing over on the embroidery side. If you bring up a design and you turn your machine off and you come back to it and you're like, oh, what was that design? The machine will resume that design for you <clears throat> and you can accept it. Excuse me. <clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> I don't know why I'm having a little frog here. And we do have our our lock on here. So this will lock out the buttons here. So when you're changing a foot, when you're popping your plate off, you can uh, put your lock on it. We'll keep your machine from running should you bump one of the, the buttons there. <clears throat> Sorry about that. So going across the top here, this row right above the stitches, I don't know if we can get in, are we in close? Very good. So we have the, this is where our utility stitches are. This is our decorative. We have a, um, alphabet and we have sewing applications. So under your decorative tab, all of these groupings correspond to the same ones that are under the lid. So if you find a stitch up here, maybe under quilt, you can go into the quilt section and then you can page through down here to find the stitch that you want. Let's go back in there. There's two pages of these and I'm going to page over and you can see I've put a created stitch in there already. So <clears throat> you could pull up a created stitch if you wanted to. Let's close that. Now going across, here's your alphabet. These are on the sewing side. So we have the two block and script that are seven millimeter, and then we have a block nine millimeter. This is a nine millimeter machine, and that means that space that's under your needle there from left to right gives you 91 needle positions. And as I mentioned earlier, if you have one of our other top of the line machines, those snap on feet will fit this machine as well. So it's a nice uh, combo to add to your machines. Many of us have more than one machine. For some reason, we just have to have more than one to get all of our things done. And then the last one over here, this is our t-shirt. And I call this, this is sewing applications. We affectionately call it the t-shirt, but under here you'll find what I call the, like the sewing helper. So if you wanted to do over edge stitch today, you could touch right here. It'll tell you what foot to use. It'll give you some options for um, different fabrics and you could just, maybe I'm doing a stretch knit today. I would select here, it presets my tension my stitch for me, though Janome has left me in control. If I need to change right up here, I can come up here and make any changes to that stitch. Now, while we're here, if you notice right down here, it says FS. This is favorite stitch. So what happens with favorite stitch, this is on almost every stitch in the machine. If I make changes up here and I wanna use this stitch over and over, I can save it as a favorite stitch. So I'm just gonna move this up a little bit and I'll go to favorite stitch. I'm gonna put it in a folder and you'll see it highlight there. So every time I come back to this stitch, we'll go away to somewhere else, maybe over here. When I come back to this stitch and I open this up, my stitch numbers will be right there. So uh, favorite stitch, one of these things that Janome has added um, to our top of the line machines. And it's very, very handy. I don't have to have little sticky notes all around my machine now. I can make my changes right here. It'll save it. Anytime I want to go back, I can go in and, and uh, if you saw the little trash can there, I can trash my stitch if I want to change it. So I always have those options. So this is our sewing applications. So let me go back one more so we can see the ones we have, seaming, blind hem, zipper, we have our over edge, of course, roll hem, gathering, and another page here for basting, tacking, our patchwork. Under here, this patchwork is for memorized piecing. And if you're a quilter, this is really handy if you're sewing maybe two, a lot of two and a half inch blocks or three inch blocks. You can set the length of your seam. Not the, not your, you can set your stitch length too, but your seam length. So you can set up your machine, sew the first one, memorize it, and then unplug your foot control and just use your start stop button. Raise your foot up, put your next piece down, put the foot down, hit the start button. It will sew down and stop automatically for you at the end of the seam. So you can really do some fast piecing with that. Under quilting, you have your different options for quilting from free quilting. Again, it shows you right here 
it tells me right here what to do. Lower my feed dog because I'm going to do free motion quilting. You will put your feed dogs down. And on our right hand side of the machine, we do have a tab here. We pull forward to lower our feed dogs. When we're done, we push it back. And when we take our first step stitch, the feed dogs will come back up. Sometimes people get worried. They've put them down and they won't come back up, but they do. So Genome lets you know, this is a great thing about it. They let you know along the way how to do things, where things are, and what you need to use, use that stitch. So that's very handy on there. So let's go back and we'll close that one out. If I touch my home, I got an X out here. I can touch home. Takes me right back to my utility stitches, my straight stitch. So once I'm done over there, I can come right back here. I can page through to see all the stitches in that grouping. And then it's going to move to the buttonhole. We have our applique. And as we page through, it'll go through the different options that are up under the lid of the machine. But you can also find them. You see this is highlighted. You'll find those groupings right under here. All right. So let's go in and I can show you a little bit about embroidery. One of the things when you go to embroidery, you're going to put in your P foot, this foot here, and you'll unscrew. I'm going to take this foot off so I can show you that. You just unscrew this one. This is your standard A foot. And then you can install your P foot. Let me get it in there. There we go, put that on. And I always do a tiny little bit with my screwdriver. I don't wanna over tighten, but I wanna make sure it's on there. And then when I'm gonna to go to embroidery, I'm gonna come over here on this side and I'm gonna choose the two machines here. One is actually a sewing machine and one is the embroidery side. And when I do that, it tells me my carriage arm is not open and do I still wanna to stitch um, to embroidery mode? And I can, Yes, I can switch over now if I wanted to, and I could look at designs and plan out my stitching, but I'm gonna, if I wanted to open the arm, I'm just gonna X out here on the right-hand side. We have a little tab, and I'm gonna push it down and you'll see the embroidery arm move in the back here. I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna open it up. And we, when I go here now, I'm gonna touch okay. And it opens up, you can see the arm moving into place. And it opens up and gives me my options of looking at designs in the machine, going into monogramming. So we have lettering, monogramming, and some decorative stitches in here, or if I wanted to go to the edit screen. Now we're gonna start in the edit screen today. So I'm gonna touch there first. And once we get in there, we can check that we are using the right hoop. And you can see, the, the machine comes with the five and a half by five and a half hoop. I'm gonna lay that on here now. There is an optional larger hoop that you can use, but we're gonna use the five and a half by five and a half. And so now that I'm on the edit screen, I'm gonna go find a design. And the first one, I'm gonna go back to my home. I'm gonna to touch my designs and I can sort through my designs by um, type of design, here and page through, or I can look by hoop size. So I can come down here and I can decide which hoop size I want. So I'm gonna stay right here because I wanna show you a few things in the edit screen. We're gonna pick this bird right here and I can move it with my fingers right down here or use the tools down here, the arrows. And I wanna copy that one. So right here is our copy paste. And when you touch it, it just beeps but it puts it right on top of itself. So you have to be careful you don't push it too many times because you don't wanna have six birds on top of themselves. And I'm gonna page over to show you some more tools because I wanna mirror image this. This is our little hamburger mirror image tab. And I wanna mirror image it this direction. Let me say, did I do it in the right direction? Let's say, okay. And we'll slide it over, there we go. So I have my two birds mirror imaged. And I'll go back to my designs again. And I'm gonna pick up one more design and I'm just gonna move that to the top. So I can move it around anywhere I want, just stick it right up there. Let's add lettering really quick so I can show you the monogram function. So under monogramming, 
we do have three fonts. Then we have two preset monograms. And if you come over to this page, we have what's called border and normal sew. These are stitches that you sometimes see on the sewing side of your machine. So you can use them over on the embroidery side of your machine. So let me page back because we're gonna use the Gothic. I'm just gonna select that. And I'm gonna leave it in the position it is. I'm gonna choose medium sized letters. And I'm gonna start with a capital. And the word I know I can spell is Janome. So I'm gonna do that first, lowercase. There we go, get that all in there. Once I have it, I touch OK, and it'll be right there on my edit screen for me to use. And I can move it around, but I can also use lettering art. And when you look through our tools, this tool didn't highlight till I had lettering. So now I can touch it and I can curve my letters this way. I can move them apart a little bit this way. And if I like that, I can touch OK. It saves all my settings. And now I can save this if I want, or I can take it right to the ready to sew screen and stitch it out. But one thing, these two designs are the same. So I can do what's called color sort or color grouping. I can touch here. It's going to group those colors together. I'm just gonna page over. So it will stitch all the red in this one and all the red in that one before moving on. So I'm gonna to touch okay. And now we are in our ready to sew screen. It says ready to sew right at the top, tells me what hoop to use. It Right here, it's a little extra warning to say, this is the hoop you should be using, which I have set out for us. And then over here, we have a few more tools. And the one I love from this side is the flower. When you see all the petals, you see your whole design. And when you touch the the, the flower, you'll see just one part of the design at a time. So right now it's only going to sew these red parts. I'm going to page through the colors so we can see it change. So now it's going to stitch this portion and you can see it's stitching on both sides because I use the color sort. That's going to do that section and so forth till we get all the way to the end. And it tells me right up here I have 12 colors. And from the beginning, it told me how long it would stitch. And I'm stitching at 800 stitches per minute. So it's pretty fast. And there we go with the Janome and we're back to the beginning. So this is a really handy tool going from the full flower to the, to the petal. This is a one to move your hoops forward if you need to make an adjustment. And there's some other tools in here. We don't need to go over all of them today. I can easily go back to my edit screen if I wanted to go back. And if I needed to save this design, I could just touch right there. I could add a name and I'm just gonna call it AB and okay. And we'll say over here, there you can see AB is right there and we're good to go. All right, let's go back to the ready to sew screen because I have a USB stick in the side here and I'm gonna show you how to open your USB stick and pull a design off of there. Now with Janome, everyone talks about formatting your USB. To format your USB, you just wanna have your machine off, put your USB in the side, turn your machine on, wait a minute, turn your machine off, take your USB stick out and take it to your computer. When you take it to your computer, you'll notice it has two folders on it. Uh, and EMB folder for embroidery and an ORD folder for ordinary sewing. That's for saving a stitch, maybe like um, a created stitch or maybe you did a combination stitch. Those would be saved under there. So you could save them onto your USB stick as well. So once you open your USB stick in the embroidery side, you'll see I can look at anything I've saved in the machine. So I have something saved there or I can go over to my USB stick. And I have two folders over here today. I have my EMBF folder and I have an August class folder over here. So Janome opens that EMB folder I talked about in the beginning and inside it is your EMBF folder. On your computer, you would copy paste, open your EMBF folder and place your design in there. So here are the designs that I've placed into my EMBF folder. I'm gonna back up one. 
here I've added a whole folder. So I can select this and then I can see in that fold, oops, let's go back, in that folder, in that folder I have one design. So you have an option on your USB stick under your EMB folder, and it really should say EMB up here, but here's your EMBF. Of course, you can put designs right in there and you can also load a folder and bring in designs with a folder. So you could have your designs sorted here. Do you know me will always show you folders on the first page and then you'll need to page over to see any designs. And there's no designs left and right, so it's beeping at me. I don't think I have anything here. Usually it says at the top, if you have more than one page, we'll go back. I don't think I have, no, I don't have two pages, but if you have more pages, they are sorted by hoop size. So here you would have your five and a half by five and a half designs. And if you made any of the larger designs, your hoop that is uh, 6.7 by 7.9, the larger hoop, which is optional, those would show on a separate page. All right. I think I've covered just about everything. I wanna show how to, we're gonna X out of here, and how to attach your hoop to the machine. Your hoops all come with a positioning grid. So you could mark a crosshair on your fabric. You would loosen your hoop up, take your fabric and your stabilizer and set it inside here. And you would, could lay this on top of your fabric match your crosshair to the crosshair here by sliding your fabric back and forth. Once you have it in place, you remove this, make sure your hoop is finger tight like that. There we go. And you're gonna slide your slide it under your foot and back here, I don't know if we can see underneath there, back here is our connector right here. You can take this piece on top put it on and now our hoop is connected. You would do all your stitching. It's going to say completed on the ready to sew screen. At that point, you can undo this and take it off, take your embroidery out of there and you have a nice embroidered piece. I'm done embroidering. So I'm gonna go back to uh, regular sewing. So I'll touch my two machines. It's going to ask that I'm switching to ordinary sewing. Do I wanna save that design? A little extra note for us for that and it says please remove hoop you do want to remove your hoop when your arm is moving when it's not embroidering and it's going to move back to the home position or to a set position always put your hoop on after it stops moving i'm going to say okay my arm is going to go back into place in the back and then i can push my little tab and it'll close up just like that i would go ahead and change my foot and put back on my ankle with my A foot and I'd be all ready to go back to regular sewing. Now let's say I'm done for the day or I'm gonna take my machine somewhere. My embroidery unit comes off the back. I'm gonna turn the machine off to show you that. You just turn your machine off. On the far side over here is a little button and you're going to push that. Hang on, I'm on it quilt so sometimes it doesn't want to move. There, there it goes. So you slide it and your embroidery unit comes on. I'll bring it up here so we can see what it looks like. So this is your embroidery unit. Now your machine weighs just under 23 pounds. So that's why I say it's a great compact machine for travel. When I'm ready to put it back on, there's two uh, little dots here. I align those. Make sure it's there and I just slide it back over my embroidery units on I'm ready to go and I would close and may I interrupt for just a quick second sure a random question about the embroidery arm is the arm being behind the machine like that exclusive to Janome I believe so um we started out with the um with our 11 oh let's see the 9,000 and it's called the linear I'm trying to think of the whole terminology because now we've moved into our our bigger machine which ha uses a different system but this was um what Janome had we were really the first ones to have that arm that opens to the back like this 
giving you all that space over here so it's not in the way of your embroidery. And we had this system up until we brought out our CM17 and our super large hoop. So that made a difference. They moved the uh, embroidery arm to a different position. But I, I love this because this uh, embroidery arm has two uses. Um, when it's open like this, it's for embroidery. There is an optional accessory a seam guide that you can put on right here and it attaches into here and you can set it on your, um, I think JP can find it. it's in the styrofoam box there. It's an optional accessory, but I just want to point it out because that one there, yeah. Do you see it there? It's right in the first part of it, JP, right under your hand. Nope. Well, he's grabbing he that and we do have a couple of other questions regarding sure. the hoop. Um, or Diana is asking, what size is the other hoop? And did I hear correctly that it's not included? Right, this is the, the five, five and a half by five and a half is included um, with, with the machine. And the optional hoop is 6.7 wide by 7.9. And I think we, JP is gonna hand it to me so we can show that. This would be an optional, optional hoop. And I don't know, I don't know if we can, see, let's see if you can see that. Um, so you have a little bit, you have much more space here on this one. And I don't know on, on your end of it, what you what you offer for uh, additional hoops, but that would be the additional hoop. And even starting out, if you're just starting out with embroidery, this is a good way to go with that five and a half by five and a half. It's very common to use that hoop. What I was talking about, oh, this is the other one. So this, it looks, our, our um, seam guide looks similar to this, except it has the connector from the hoop and you would connect it right back here and you could slide it in and use it for your seam, um, for seam. And it's an optional piece. It's called the seam guide. So that's what that is. I didn't have one out specifically because it doesn't come with the machine. I was trying to show all the things that really come with it. But I like to point out that optional accessory because it's very handy if you're, even if you're quilt piecing, long strips, or um, you're know, doing any dress, dress wear, or even when you're doing top stitching, it can be very handy for that. All right, I think I covered everything. Um, I'm trying to think. Are there any questions that I might have missed? We do have a couple here. I've got one saying, can this machine scan embroidery, embroider by quadrant and everything lined up? It doesn't. It doesn't have scan. What you would do if you were going to, multi, well, if you're talking about multi-hoop and if you had a large design, because we have, you know, a five by five or this other hoop, what you would do is it, you could use software and you could print yourself a template. And sometimes, soft, I know in the Artistic Digitizer software, which is multi-formatted, you can uh, multi-hoop, which would break your design apart into other hoops, and then you would print out your template and using uh, the, the grid and your template, you would be able to position your design, the parts of your design. You would stitch one part of it and slide your fabric over, realign everything, put your template down, realign everything, make sure it's matching and put it under there. You do have an option once you get it in there, sometimes you're not quite right on that center part. We have a jog feature so you can move your needle left and right or up and down to get it back into this center spot because all of our de designs, they not that they start in a center part, but they're centered and then they'll go to wherever the very first stitch is, but they'll use this as your alignment right there. Okay, let's, uh, very cool. And then we do have one more question from Jean. She's asking, is this machine a good step up from the SOAS 725S? Oh, I would say definitely yes, because you're moving up to a computerized machine that offers you all those sewing features of a, one of our top of the line machines and embroidery. So it's a great way to get started with embroidery because you're not, you know, it's not a big package um, for that. So you can sample a little bit of embroidery and get really get hooked. That's how I was. I bought my first embroidery machine was the 9,000. And I always had said, what do I need that for? And now I'm like the embroidery software specialist. So I'm not, you know, that's how these things work. You kind of do a little bit of embroidery, 
Um, one of the things I do a lot of are in the hoop project. So it's not just about putting an embroidery on your, you know, your shirt or uh, names on a bag and things like that, but you can actually create uh, zip pouches, uh, stuffies, uh, all kinds of uh, zipper tabs and things like that. You can create those all in the hoop of your machine. You just get those designs and um, there's instructions on how to do that. So that's a really, I like that part of it, the crafty side to use that. I didn't mention that, you know, I did mention all the notes that Janome puts on the screen, but they also put in all the numbers for threading. So if you were go to thread this machine, you can even open this to see inside, but you just follow the numbers down through all the way. And then you see seven here. That's your last one. You would put your thread up and over for the threader. And our threader works in both the embroidery side and the, and the sewing side. So you never have to thread that, um, that needle. This would be one I would recommend to, I, I've actually men mentioned this to a couple of people who are interested in embroidery. And um, I said, this is a great way to go because it just gives you that, all the stuff that embroidery does in a, a little bit smaller package. So you're, you can really get started right away. And if you needed a machine to take to a class, if you have a larger machine, this is a great machine to take to a class at under 23 pounds, great big handle on the top for carrying that and you know me, the back side of this machine is flat. You take your embroidery arm off. So when you carry this, you would put this out away from you and the back of the machine would sit flush to you. So it's a little easier to carry. So you're not, you know, reaching over. So a nice big handle for that, not just one in the center. You can get the optional, there's optional uh, accessories. There's thread stands you can get for it as well. As I said, the extra hoop is over there. You can get a, um, a scissor cut, a, a foot pedal scissor cutter, because it has a little a, a, a port back here, so you could plug that in. That's a feature on some of our larger machines as well. So, I mean, it's very impressive. I mean, maybe I won't give it up. I think I might just take it back home with me. I, <laughs> I just had so much fun with thing. it. It's really, you know, it's. I, I didn't really miss my large machine that much. I was like doing everything I wanted to do. So very happy. And I took it on retreat too. I, I actually took it to a retreat. So that was fun. Well, it does appear to be a very comprehensive machine. I'm just shocked. I mean, I was kind of thinking, oh, this is going to be a great one to show because it's a great travel machine. You get embroidery and sewing, but I'm like, dang, <laughs> there's a lot of features. Yeah. <laughs> And also, just for my curiosity, I have a Memorycraft 8200 QCP SE, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it looks very similar to that model um, versus that being embroidery as well. Uh, is there much difference? Do you know offhand? So that so one of the things that Janome does is they you'll notice that there's some of the same. Uh, the buttons are the same. They might even be close to the same position. Um, the icons on the screen are the same. So when you move from model to model, when you move up from a mechanical to an electronic machine, you'll see those features on our machines as we come through. And so your 8200 QCP will have a very, you know, I think you, that one might have the, some of them have the little dial on here, but um, you know, just, your screen looks very similar. Um, very. You have the buttons over here with your start stop. Mm -hmm. And you know, this start stop button, you can use it when you're, when you, I use only the start stop, I sew standing up. So if I want to start out sewing, I can hold it in and it'll go slow. And then when I, when I let go, it'll come up to speed. And when I get to the end of my seam, I can hold it in and it'll slow down and then stop. So I have control right there. I don't have to use the foot control. I can use my start stop button almost all the time. Um, very yeah. cool. Yeah, with, it has amazing I, I features. I'm very happy with it. And uh, yeah, very similar to my 8200. So I like mm -hmm. the embroidery part of it and the, that you can bring it for traveling. So wonderful demonstration. I'm very excited about it. <laughs> you can add this in as one of your second machines to go along with your mm -hmm. 8200 because the 8200 and this machine are both nine millimeters. So all those mm -hmm. exceptions snap on would work here as well. So. I may have missed it before, but what is the throat space on that machine? So this is a little over 10 inches here, and then it's just about five going up. Awesome. Well, um, we can go ahead and move forward with doing our giveaway if you want to stick around for that. And then I'll go into some awesome pricing for that beautiful machine. Sounds great. 
All right. All right, Brian, let's see what we have. All right, let's see. And this is going to be for that 100 pack of Floriani thread. Yay. Congratulations, <laughs> Linda. <laughs> awesome. Well, that is great. And Anne, thank you again for joining us. We really enjoyed you being here. And if you don't mind, could you tell everybody again where they can watch your videos, yours and Miriam's? Sure. Um, we, we do weekly videos, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Janome Sewing Machines page and also the um, Continental page. So Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday on the Janome Sewing Machine page. Fridays, we're on the Continental Club page. Awesome. Well, we will definitely be checking those out. So thank you again for joining us, and we will go over pricing. All right. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Have a great day, Anne. That was so awesome. I am really excited about this machine. So let's go ahead and take a peek at what it is offered at right now. You can be losers.